Anyway, I've had a little recreation here because I am so far ahead of the game right now. Welcome to episode, is it number nine? I don't know. It's a lot. But we're at the point right now where Galliano Junk Pile in the playlist, if you're seeing this first, you need to go stop, immediately go up there and click on the playlist and dedicate a bunch of your life that you would have just got in trouble getting loaded or whatever it is y'all do besides watch me or some other meaningless event. I should have set, structured that sentence differently. Anyway, we have done all kinds of stuff to this body. Uh, the last episode was called internal surgery. We put a lot of stuff in here, got a lot of the wiring and potentiometers and all that kind of thing done. And so now we're going to put the neck on this thing and you're going to, you're asking yourself, Hey, why is he holding that guitar in front of himself for so long? And the answer is you didn't want to see what was just on the end of my finger. Anyway, you get the truth on this channel, like it or not. Anyway, we got to put this neck back on here. And while we're here, I'm going to show you some utter strength. This tunematic bridge is going to sit there. And now we need to make sure that the neck angle is such that when I put a straight edge on there, it hits the top of the bridge. And we're really close as soon as I get all this in place. Now, we're going to take this to the bench right away. And you purists out there, um, I don't want to hear it because I'm on, I am going to put a bolt and a T-nut in this neck right here. So we're going to drill through here. We're going to come in here and we're going to put an Allen head uh, bolt in here and we're going to bolt the neck on. Also, you'll notice that we put a shim in, in there, right there, that's tapered. Where is it? Chick flick teal pointer. Wake up, dude. Right there. And that's going to give us this angle we need. Anyway, purists, if you don't like that, you can go back to sitting on the, the stairs in Animal House singing, I gave my love a cherry, and then someone will smash your guitar. And when they do, make sure it is an arch top with F holes. Don't send me a flat top. Make sure anybody that smashes guitars of the person singing, I gave my love a cherry, as some fraternity thing to try to gain relevance that way. Make sure it's an arch top. Smash it. Send it to me and it will become part of the trademark Sean Man Dude Collection. So let's skip all of whatever it is I'm talking about. It has nothing to do with the guitar. And get to the bench and I will show you how to permanently disfigure this thing. And in the process, make sure it lives through any dive bar it could encounter. Let's go to the bench. All right, we're at the bench. Um, there's going to be a review of stuff. Um, for those that have seen it before, uh, that's okay. Um, the new guys haven't. And uh, I've been told I need to exercise patience because much of my life seems to be trying to educate people about process. I guess that's what happens when you're the old man in the process. But... Mark Twain said something about no amount of evidence will convince a fool who chooses to believe a lie. Yeah, okay. That's like, I think that's Captain Obvious stuff. Somebody gave me this the other day. I went to something, uh, I think voluntarily, even though I was forced to go. Look at that. Bike safety. I'm an old man, so I'll give you some advice there. Bike safety probably get, begins with making sure there's a seat on the bike. And um, I think that calls for some more chick flick teal bubbles. What do you think? Okay, now that you all have gotten whatever you need to sedate yourself to work through this. A couple things we need to think about. First off, uh, this neck is clamped on right now. Uh, and we're trying to find some parameters as far as we're going to put this 
two pneumatic bridge so we can move things back and forth here. Uh, this bridge is going to be considerably bigger than the one that was on here because it didn't come with a bridge. Imagine that. And the tailpiece that was on this thing when it was new was a rationed uh, tailpiece because it was made out of wood because metal was being rationed at the time at the beginning of World War I. So we're going to put this gold monstrosity on it that we've made we're going this is going to help us correct the weight along with that piece of red heart in there that we put in there for the grover imperials and other ridiculousness we're going to put on there anyway so when it comes to resetting a neck couple things you need to know you need to mark to the 12th fret 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 i have not put uh, fret markers on here yet but we're going to start at the back of the knot and we're going to measure until we get a mark so maybe I should turn it around and do the other end okay there we go there's a mark right there so double of what it is from the back of the nut to the 12th fret meaning we move this down here like so and go to the 12th fret whichever one that one was i still have to put fret markers on this thing here and what do you know there's a mark there so this bridge is going to end up being right there now we want to take a straight edge and lay it on the frets on the neck and see if it's nice and flat and now we're going to set the neck not only straight this way but this way and we want to get it where it's just sitting on the top of the bridge now we can move the bridge up if we need to and that's a desired situation so that's the first thing we want to think about we don't want to think about putting everything on and then wondering how we're going to get it to fit to the bridge so that's where we are right now i am going to pull off the neck because i have it temporary clamp temporarily clamped you want to remember i have not put the back of this guitar on yet um, and, and I've warned you before and, and, and gave you a disclaimer that taking off the back of a guitar has its issues because you're going to have to put it back on and after the guitar has been sitting out and we're fixing all kinds of cracks and doing whatever we need to do, it's going to fight you when you put it back on. So there's going to be a number of steps to take. But the way I achieved getting the neck at the right angle, or at least starting it off this way, was to cut this shim, and this is a, out of a Patron box, and notice that I tapered it. So when it goes down and gets glued on here, it provides me with that taper that's going to pitch the neck headstock down just a little bit, but it's going to cover everything. The width of this is going to raise everything up in the pocket equidistant, and that is going to involve, involve now putting a couple of sh shims down in here and making sure this is all clean. You don't want to just stuff it with glue and think that it's going to be okay. So we've got some work to do here about getting this lined up and glued up. And that's not a lot to see. It's just basically cutting some shims. And then once we get it where it needs to be... I'm going to take a long bit and I am going to run it through the neck and I'll, I'm going to give you a hint about bolting necks. You want to remember this guitar is going to go to somebody that's going to beat it up. It's already 80 years old and I don't need it to come apart and become a wall hanger. Now I've seen a video out there somewhere where somebody bolted a neck on or screwed it on. Most of them screw the necks on because it's easier. But it's easy to run 
the screw through right there because it's about, it appears to be halfway up the neck. If you're going to do this, you need to be in the middle right here because if you blow this out, you've got a problem. You've got to glue it back on. The guitar, the neck wants to pivot that way. So what we're going to do is we're going to get everything lined up and then we're going to come in and take a pilot bit. We're actually going to have to flatten a part of the neck out. That's going to be about right here. Again, you think that this is the best spot, but when you line that up, you're right there, and that's not going to be good. So we're going to be way up high in here. We're going to have to grind down a flat spot, and then we're going to make sure that's in the middle, and we're going to take a small pilot bit and run it through. We're going to end up all the way through this tail block, and then we're going to take progressively larger bits until we get an Allen headed bolt that will fit in here. And then we're going to take on the back side of the head block where the hole is, we are going to mount what's called a, a, a T knot, which is threaded. So we'll have to take uh, a Forstner bit and inset that a little bit. And then there are are, are screws that go in that so when the bolt comes through it's threaded and instead of a wood screw that's going to work loose this will actually allow you to make adjustments and you could actually shim it if you wanted to but we need to get all that out of the way before we glue the back on and everything's got to be right now you want to remember that when you're getting the neck in shape look what's going on here as I move this in order to get everything in shape here, I'm going to be pitching and pulling this. And if I pull in here, the effect is this gets wider. So we want to really pay attention not to get things too out of whack and be cranking on it too much. But it's really important we get the neck angle right if we are going to bolt it. Once that's done, I get the bolt in. I glue up everything. And then it will be time to level this out and put the back on. I've got some more stuff I want to do. I want to do final cleats here, wherever these cracks were. The fabric is nice, but I'm going to want to put a cleat there and there and wherever there were cracks to make sure that that's all good. I have work like that to do on the back of the guitar too. So I'm going to give you a glimpse or two of how this is going, but I think it's pretty self-explanatory. We'll try to keep this episode a little bit shorter and I'll show you at the end what happened. Okay, I've drilled a series of small holes and getting progressively bigger, but I want to end up taking this bit now and going through the center here and exiting right there. Do you see that? That's going to be good because we have missed this lower end that's very fragile. But I'm going to drill a bit bigger hole now and we're going to mount this to the neck of the guitar or the body of the guitar now. And we are going to get our pilot hole, meaning once we put this here with that shim in place and get everything clamped and lined up like so, once that's all good and we've put our straight edge and we know where our bridge is going to be, then we're going to take a long bit and go through and enter here. And that way, when it comes time to get everything right, we finally drilled the bigger hole and we know where the Forstner bit will have to be. You want to drill the Forstner hole first because it's got the tip point. If you start trying to drill a Forstner bit into a hole that's already done a big hole, it doesn't work out. Anyway, I'll kind of show you that along the way here, but I need to get this bolted up nice and straight.
Okay, we've got our hole started. It's right in the middle of the neck pocket, which is good. And then we're going to run that through. Okay, nice long bit, small bit, there we go. But when you get that hole all the way through, before you start drilling anything any bigger, you want to remember that you could basically glue your neck on right now, but because you have the back of the guitar off, Forstner bits have a, a, a point right there. And so if I were to drill this hole out uh, with the size hole I will ultimately need, that would be a mistake because what I want to do is I want to be able to use that small hole with that point to seat my Forstner bit like this and sink this down a little to get my T-nut there. Also, on this end of the world, where am I? When I go to put my uh, bolt on here, I'm going to leave the end of it exposed because the collar of the, the head that you use the uh, Allen wrench on is a little bit bigger than the bolt. So I'm going to leave that out here. Um, somebody's going to complain, well, my, come on, you're not Eddie Van Halen or Django or even Sun House. I wouldn't bother Sun House. So grow up a little bit, but I'm going to put that here. So I want everything to seat. So I want to make sure I don't have a lot of slop in here. And again, I've got everything I need now to basically glue the neck on, let it set up. I'm going to do a little bit of fingerboard work here because there's a little bit of bleed out here and a tad bit of edges on these frets. And I think I can go ahead and glue this on here. Okay, last thing here. There's always a last thing with me that I forgot or 10 of them. When we go to ha go ahead and put this shim on here that's already set, we want to remember that we're going to use this neck mounted pickup. And I'm going to want to make sure that I know where this is going to line up on here. I don't want to split either one of these. And if I need to put a little piece of a shim or something in here to make this work, but this is going to fit here. And then I'm going to cut these screws down here these are adjustments so the poles can be just right on the strings. This all has to be taken into consideration when you're gluing this up. This isn't thick enough, as you can see, for one of these to hold it itself. So it looks like it's going to go on that shim piece. You see that? So we need to think about that when we're gluing all this together. Okay, guys, I interrupted the bench work for a minute here to tell you probably the most important thing you can know if you're reattaching a neck on an arch top with the back off. Now, I have this whole old Harmony flat top that has the top of it off. You've seen this one before. Now, imagine that I am wanting, wanting to reset the neck on this thing. And Everything I do about lining up the neck, the angle, and everything is going to be dependent on things being solid. And I want you to look here. I want you to watch what's happening. I've told you about guitars that when this head block is starting to cut loose from the sides or the bottom or even the top, that this can happen. Watch this. You see that? You see how much that's moving? Do you know what a fraction of a millimeter here will do to the angle of a neck? So, just remember how fragile that's right, where is it? Fragile this is. Never discount that because if we have the back off of the guitar, that thing's about ready to cave in on itself. If we have the back off the guitar, even though this appears to be perfect right now, when we unbolt everything, glue everything up or unclamp everything, this 
angle can be off just a tad. So what we're going to do is we're going to take everything off, neck, everything, and we are going to use a series of clamps and a piece of wood that will connect the head block and the tail block and hold everything this way. But we're going to line up the back and set it on here because you're, you're going to find out when we look at this from the overhead autopsy camera, yo, what up, that the sides can be pulling out a little bit uh, even though the, they're attached to the top. And you'll see some bow out and stuff. So what we'll do is we'll use some clamps and stuff to get the body right where we need it to be, all of this, and then this way so it's not caving in on the on the waist. I've compared the waist to an old man. When your waist starts going, if it gets skinnier, force tries to make you lean forward. Same thing will happen in the guitar. So watch this part very carefully. We are going to line up the neck and the rest of the body in a way that suggests that the back is on here and the thing is intact. That way when we do go to glue, uh, glue the back back on, with the next set, because face it, doing what I'm going to do with this bolt and T-nut attached in here can't be done very easily with the back on. So let's get this lined up back to the downward autopsy camera. Okay, no, I have not been fangirling Bob Log the third all weekend, even though he was in... He's going to be in Costa Mesa tonight at the Wayfarer. And um, yeah, y'all know what a pen and pencil is? Be writing this down. And he was at the Zebulon in Los Angeles last night in the Yakima Casino in Highland, California, cultural capital of the world, the night before that. And he did rock the Casbah in San Diego the night before that. But anyway, it's not like I know or anything. But I've been having to... Take a break because I've had to use these sponges and this scrap apparatus and all this kind of thing to rehydrate these two together because this one has been in the low humidity environment that is my shed. Anyway, etc. You get it. So, wasn't that a waste of your time? No, because you're going to get a clip pretty soon of what Bob was doing playing one of my guitars, of course. Anyway, I said in my long drug out explanation, you can see this move a little bit here. You see that? And a tad bit of a millimeter will cause the neck not to be in the right place. So you have to stabilize the body first which means putting the back back on. But how do you do that without putting the back back on? Well, let me show you how small my work area is. Look here. I have hydrated this and got everything where I can push down on everything and have it line up without it cracking. This thing had all kinds of cracks and there were different multiple planes to deal with. But the moral of the story is, this is a known measurement between here and here. So I'm going to take this fancy Beverly Hardware Company. Can you believe it? It was on Rodeo Drive in Beverly Hills, California, cultural capital world. So what I need to do is I need to put this at the end and this up here and I'm going to take a piece of tape and mark the end of it right here. Okay, I've got a piece of tape right here. I'm going to come to the middle here and I'm going to put this piece of tape up here at the edge where the body back of the guitar ends, I mean. Now, you'll notice that before, where is it? Before, when I was trying to measure it like this, 
it was very difficult, which became easier once I turn this over because after you flip it over, it gets much easier, trust me, on that one. Anyway, so I put a mark right here at the end of the body. Now, you will notice that I have drilled two holes here that mysteriously two chick flick teal screws fit into like so. I'm going to have to drill two more holes once I know where they are. And they're going to be somewhere right in here. At which point I will take the love pencil out of the wink can. Trademark. Patent pending. And I will mark this where I need to. Let me get this set up. Okay, so the idea here is these holes right here will, the end goes to the end of the body right here, like so. Then I'm going to take my pencil and I'm going to mark two spots right here in the tail block. You see them right there? I am going to drill two holes that will mysteriously match the screw that goes down in here, which will stabilize this end. Notice there are two holes, not one, two holes, or maybe even three. You don't want overkill, but you don't want this thing pivoting, okay? So watch that. I've got that there. Now, I'm going to come over here, and you can tell that the body here is that much from lining up. So if I take this and pull it out, I'm going to know that I'm going to drill my hole here, right about here, and right about here, and that way it will hit this end block, or the tail block. This is the end block. So stick with me here, and I'm going to show you magic. Okay, one of these bits is totally different. One of these bits is not the same. This is the one that's a pilot for the Chick Flick Teal screw that we are going to use to stabilize this. And notice these holes are up here already. So we're going to put this right in the middle, right up to the end. And we're going to go down in the middle of here. And we don't have to do a lot here to get this lined up. We just don't worry about this. We can fill these up when they're done. It's really important we get this attached here now. And you want to make sure that the end of this is against the end of the body because the end of the back will need to be right there. So hold it tight and just run this down. Not all the way where you strip everything out, but far enough where they're not going to be sticking up. Now, we're going to have to take this and make sure that it's the that's a, this mark right here. Come on, Chick Flick Teal Pointer, wake up. Don't complain about working seven days a week and crying because you didn't get to go to Bob Log. But that needs to end up right there. And interestingly enough... You can use this. Look how much slack I can get out of this. So if I put that right there, like so, now I can just take and throw Chick Flick Teal Pointer away since I'm done with its use and just drill a couple pilot, hole, pilot holes. There we go. Now, believe that or not, guys, but 
this has the equivalent of having the back back on the guitar so now when we flip this over everything is stable here and when we do what we need to do with the neck we don't have to worry about things moving around we can put our shim right there and we can put our neck on and we can line everything up. We can even put a couple tuners up here and put two uh, strings on. We know where the bridge is going to sit. We can put the tailpiece on, which we already have the mounts ready for. And it's almost as if this guitar is all together. Once that's done, of course, we'll want to slack off the strings once everything is glued up. But this is the way where you can fool the guitar into believing that the back is on and you can line everything up and everything turns out perfect almost like you can convince your mother-in-law that you're actually a good person all right let's finally put the neck back on this thing okay a couple things that you uh, need to catch up on here before we move along and Remember me telling you about a Forstner bit? This is a Forstner bit. Remember me telling you we drilled a small pilot hole that went through the head block, which is right there. And the reason we did the small hole is this little nib on the end fits down in that pilot hole. And then we just indent that a little bit because this T-knot is gonna fit right down in there. Of course, it's gonna be the other way around. And those screws will need pilot holes to mount that there. That way, when the bolt comes through and tightens up, it will actually pull this this way and keep everything tight. Okay, now we're going to take a bit that's a little bit bigger than the T-nut shaft. And we're going to drill through where the pilot hole is right there in that neck pocket. Alrighty, you want to do that slow. Make sure there's no burrs in there. And that'll drop right down in there. And then we just put the pilot screws, pilot holes for the screws, and use our chick flick teal screws, of course. Okay, so the way this works now is when you put the neck on, we're just going to turn this in, and you can see it emerging through that T-nut. And no matter what you do, pulling on it this way, the force is pulling against the T-nut, which will keep the neck on until this turns into petrified wood, and then you won't have to worry about it much now, will ya? Now, the hole that goes through the neck only needs to be as big as this, not as big as the hole we drilled for the T-nut. So it's just important enough that this passes through comfortably, is not sloppy, and then we can seat this with the washer right there. Okay, there we go. Sometimes we have to take a little bit off the top of that washer and flatten it out, but there you go. Everything will line up. We're not going to screw or tighten up the bolt until we get the neck glued on and everything is set up. It's just a keep it there type of thing. Okay, a couple of things I want to point out here before we get rolling. If you need to put a flat spot on a washer, don't hold on to it with your fingers. Use a vice grips, flatten it out. Be careful which way the belt sander is going, but this thing will heat up on you, so this is a good way to do this. Next, I want to tell you that we basically are raising this neck up and pitching it back by 
making a shim like this and you can see that it's been sanded down to give us a little angle here you see that and so what this does is it actually moves the neck up in the pocket about the same distance as where this equals out from that flare or that bevel right there so I've got the hide glue heater going on over here and it has two reservoirs and um, in one of the reservoirs I've taken this veneer it has an ad adhesive on the back you can use that or not but you heat it up with iron but anyway the idea is is that if you soak it in water you can basically take this and bend it like this of course you cut it to the width that's right here and then once it's curved you can let me get this whipped around here you can pop that down and just hold on to the middle and use a screwdriver or something just point to the middle there and pop it down and get that to seat right there and what you want to do is you want to use enough of the shim material again to equal the thickness of where you've put that bevel not behind it not ahead of it but right where that is because that's what's gonna work for you now again the adhesive comes off and so I can just because I've cut it to the right width and I put it in like so I can just push this down and get it seated right there I don't certainly want to put fill that up with glue now next thing I need to think about is these sides because this is notched and it's beveled if I put one thickness of this shim material right here or this veneer right there and glue it on just a little bit ahead of putting the neck in that's going to take out any slop that would give you this movement here so little trick there we're about ready oh this pickup has adjusting uh, poles where you can move them up and down individually which is nice but these are sticking out of the bottom so I had a choice to either cut those off or put a set of holes in here and um, this will mount to the neck the side of the fingerboard and I also had to do just a tad bit of sanding work on the end of the fingerboard but those drop in just like that fingerboard sits here so we're about ready to start gluing oh before I forget chick flick teal scissors cuts this veneer pretty well and once you get it wet this adhesive will come right off like so so I've got a piece cut again for this side here that I'm going to glue in while it's still a little wet we're going to get ahead of this gluing project by getting these shims in with hide glue there and there
Now in the event that this shim material doesn't want to stay there until it tacks up, you can just put a piece of binding tape there. Let it touch that inner wall just a tad, like so. Pop that around to the side and it will stay in place. So the whole idea is just to get it a little bit tacky and sticking there before we put the neck on. All right, it is party time. A couple things I wanted to show you here. I had to do a little bit of work on the edge of the fingerboard down here so these mounting tabs for this pickup would fit. Um, that's good. These shims have dried up enough just to be sticky. And we are going to put the shim in, like so. It's painted, painted chick flick teal, so that way everybody can tell that I worked on it. And so now we're just going to take our hot hide glue and get in here everywhere that shim needs to stick. I pulled the paint off of it and kept the paint off of it. And you always want to have wet rags around. I'm going to let this get a little sticky here. There we go. Hot water is a must. Notice it says body, so this part goes up towards... Notice how that is fit perfectly there. I'm going to sit that down there, like so. And then, we want this area here and this area here to sit up good with glue. Now, the nice thing about hot hide glue is that it takes a while to set up, so we got good working time. And in the in the event that something happens, remember, you can heat this stuff up. You can use a, a heat gun or steam or whatever you want to use. Um, I don't put hide glue here. There's really no reason for it. It just makes it more messy, but this angled part right here is where you want to get to and then of course this is the part that's going to go to the body that's why it says body there it'll sit right there now as this starts to get sticky we're going to be able to take our clamps and stuff and move them around and you'll see that I have a straight edge in the bridge on here. And I'm going to watch this very carefully. You want to make sure that it's sitting level and that kind of thing. Because not only do you have to worry about this angle, but you don't want it twisting and, and all that kind of thing. Because once that's set up, then you got to do all kinds of fret work that you don't need necessarily to do. Making thin frets thinner with a file is not going to straighten out a neck per se. We're going to get everything right here. Now, I also have my glue syringe, so once things start to heat up, I can or get tacky if there's any gaps or anything, I can use this to pop stuff in. I'm going to carefully go over the shims that I put in here and get a little bit of hide glue there are the shins that bent at the bottom of the pocket. Those come out nice. Right there. Good. I'm not going to be shy with this stuff. That Chick Flick Teal rag is very expensive. I spare no expands on this guitar. Let's slip this in now. Okay, I've got a straight edge ready. Got the bridge in place. Moment of truth. 
oh, this ruler being out here at the end, I can put shims. I could even put a little stand underneath it to help me set the neck angle. Let's get that out of the way. We want to make sure that those shims don't fold over on the way down. Oh, that works good. Alrighty then. We know our intonation point for the bridge is right there. Here's our straight edge. Oh, we want that to be just touching the top of that bridge. Notice that our thumb wheel adjusters are all the way down. Um, so we don't have to take anything off of this bridge. That's different. And that's just sitting right there. So we are going to... All right, we've got a clamp on either side. The bridge is on. We've got a long straight edge, and it is just touching the top. Uh, there's very little squeeze out on the neck sides here, which tells us that everything come together nice. We want to keep looking at this as it sets up and, and make sure nothing settles. But I'm happy with the way this is turning out. I'm just going to give it a few minutes and eyeball it and make sure that everything is this way and this way okay. And um, we're finally here. All right, there we go. I'm seeing light at the end of the F hole. We have put so much time and effort into this that if the neck hadn't come in pitched this way or this way, this thing would be complete junk. But we've reinforced everything. We've got the neck on, the glue set up. We're going to leave this thing alone for two more days and make sure everything is set. And then we're going to go about doing some detail work. There's additional cleats we're going to put on the back. Uh, and on the inside before we seal it up. And so the next episode is going to be about a lot of the little details that are going to make this thing ready to glue up, how you mate the surfaces um, of the body and the back and some things like that. And we'll get into all that. But I really couldn't be happier with where we're at right now because that neck angle looks great when you put... The bridge on it and I'll tell you what this yardstick trick to make the guitar feel solid while you're putting a neck on is yeah I have never seen anybody else do that now everyone will be doing it um, there's gonna be a few out there like if you want somebody that builds good cigar box guitars now that Darren Dukes is gone Del Puckett. Del Puckett will run across my stuff and he'll tell me, hey, this came from Ken and vice versa. So, hey, check out Del Puckett. Anyway, we're going to let this sit. I got some other things to do uh, to get ready. A lot of detail work, but it's not going to be too long and we are going to be chasing down some musicians to see what this thing will do. So, hey, I know this was a really long episode. I was planning on making it short, but you know what? When the camera's rolling and you're doing things that I know there's somebody out there that's got a guitar like this or worse that will benefit from all the boring details. Hey, if you have not given me a subscriber a like, I would appreciate that, and we will close this one out now. Thanks for watching.